This over here is the brand new RTX 5090 and it's a beast in so many ways. But how does it compare to this, the M4 Max, the most powerful chip that Apple can manufacture right now with 40 cores. It's got 128 gigabytes of VRAM. Yes, 32 gigabytes versus 128. So how does it exactly compare? It's probably not fair, but we're gonna do it anyway. Crucial P310 Gen 4 NVMe SSD, fast and affordable. Comes in three sizes. The non-heatsink version, 500 gigabytes, one terabyte and two terabytes, and the heatsink version, one and two terabytes in sizes. The one and two terabyte in sizes are also available in the 2230 form factor. Deliver speeds of up to 7,100 megabytes per second. In fact, is one of the fastest Gen 4 drives for your operating system, according to our testing. Also is very affordable. Plus, if you're a creator, it offers you one month for free Creative Cloud subscription, which costs roughly around $60. Go check out the latest pricing of Crucial P310 in the video description below. Now then, if you want to pick any of these up, I'm going to leave the links in the description below. It's two of the biggest companies in the world, or one of the biggest companies in the world, Nvidia versus Apple. So let's take a look. Firstly, looking at the specs, we've got the 40 core M4 Max and the 5090, which is the GB202 die or the GPU name. Then we've got a process node. Interestingly, both of them use TSMC to source their chips, but the M4 Max is, is on three nanometer compared to the four nanometer that Nvidia uses. And Nvidia's four nanometer seems to be the same as on last generation. Now, in terms of memory type, the M4 Max has a unified memory, and that's why the system memory, 128 gigabytes of RAM or unified RAM, can also be used for the GPU. So the GPU has extreme amounts of memory. The RTX 5090 has GDDR7 memory, which is super, super fast. And if you look at the memory bandwidth, that's where 5090 absolutely shines. The GDDR7 is so fast and is delivering 1,792 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth, which is over three times faster than what Apple offers on this side in here. In terms of total graphics power, the 5090 pulls 575 watts, whereas the M4 Max pulls only 75 watts. And I personally have never seen it pull 75 watts. That's, I think, the theoretical whatever. But whenever I've been using it, it's somewhere around 50, 60, somewhere around there. If you want to check out the test bench setup for the 5090, I'm going to leave the exact parts linked in the description below. The important thing to note here is I'm using 12900K with DDR4 for this 5090, okay? It's still PCIe Gen 5, so there's no bottlenecks in there, but the CPU and RAM, they're quite old and quite slow. I'm using the Asus Strix Z690A motherboard, which is probably one of the best DDR4 motherboard for the Intel's 12, 13, 14th gen. So we're creating a little bit of a CPU bottleneck there as well. It's not the best CPU out there. I'm using 64 gigabytes of Kingston Fury Beast RGB 3600 megahertz DDR4. I'm using Arctic Liquid Freezer 3, as you can see in here, in an odd position. We're using Samsung 980 Pro one terabyte for the main OS operating system. And we've got a 1200 watt be quiet power supply. If you want to check them out, the links are in the description below. So the GPU in Geekbench 6, you can see in OpenCL, the 5090 is more than three times the speed. 116,000 points to 354,000 points. That's an absolute slaughter. In Vulcan and Metal scores, even though they're not so comparable, they're not so far apart, but not sure if you can actually compare these. Moving on to Photoshop, and this is not really a GPU benchmark. GPU can accelerate that, but because the M4 Max has incredible CPU on the same die, as well as the GPU, the M4 Max absolutely slaughters the 5090. Now, this is not really a good benchmark for the 5090 to actually show the GPU benchmark against this. But I included this anywhere to show that in certain workflows, you think having a large GPU actually doesn't mean a thing. 
there's other parts in your system that are actual bottlenecks. For example, in this Photoshop, the 5090 system with 12900K is 33% slower, most likely because of the single core performance of the M4 Max. What about Premiere Pro? Because that is a mix of things now and the GPU can accelerate a lot of the video editing that you're doing. Interestingly, in standard overall scores, the 5090 is about 5% faster, but in extended overall scores, which is very interesting, the M4 Max is a lot better. As you can see, long GOP score, again, the 5090 is slower, but I do wanna make a very important note here. This version of Premiere Pro is not utilizing all of the hardware of the 5090. The RTX 5090 has very special decoders and encoders in there, new media engines that support 4 to 2 10 bit playback on hardware, which is super, super fast. No other hardware on planet right now plays these back. If we did the test in DaVinci Resolve, which you'll see in a minute, DaVinci Resolve actually supports the hardware acceleration of these media engines, what we have on the 5090. So the M4 Max actually absolutely slaughters the 5090 here in Premiere Pro just because we can't utilize everything. Apart from the actual RAW standard, you can see the 5090 really can accelerate the RAW codex and the GPU effects are a lot faster on the 5090 as well. Not as fast as I would expect it though, but still quite a bit faster. Well, in extended overall scores, we are basically double the GPU effects on the 5090. Moving on to After Effects, and here again, what matters is really your RAM capacity, and RAM amount really matters, and the CPU. It's not so much on the GPU, but certain things can be accelerated on the GPU. If we're looking at the GPU score alone, Interestingly, the M4 Max is actually faster. And if you're looking at the overall scores, the M4 Max is faster as well. So even in After Effects, the combination of what we have going on on the Mac here is quite a bit better. But now DaVinci Resolve. If we're looking at the overall basic score, which is kind of an interesting one because that is really the score for the free, DaVinci Resolve free version. But if you have either of these devices, you shouldn't really use the free version of DaVinci Resolve because the $300 what you would pay for the DaVinci Resolve would accelerate your workflow so much more because actually enables some of the hardware in these machines to give you smoother, better, faster performance. As you can see, if your program can utilize the GPU, you're gonna be a lot faster because the 5090 is a ridiculous beast. Now here, when we can actually utilize some of these media engines, you can see long GOP score about 50% faster than the M4 Max. Intraframe score though, which is ProRes codecs for example, they're better on the Mac because it's an Apple codec. The same with RAW, interestingly, it's faster on the M4 Max. The GPU effect scores here though, wow, about two and a half times as fast on the 5090 compared to the M4 Max. These GPUs are also meant for 3D workflows. So let's take a look at Blender and we can really see how the 5090 shines and what it's really made of. 7,300 points on the 5090 compared to 2,527. That is almost three times as fast on the 5090 which is ridiculous. And you can see the scores there again are so much faster on the 5090 compared to the M4 Max. In 3D, in Blender, there is no competition for this 5090. It's the fastest GPU on planet Earth right now. Moving on to Redshift or Cinema 4D. Right now, at the time of me making this video, I don't have benchmarks results for the 5090 because Cinema 4D hasn't released an update to support the 50 series GPUs. By the time you're watching this, you most likely are gonna see some scores on the screen right now. And the 5090 is probably ridiculously better. I'm gonna guess around three times as good as the M4 Max. You tell me if I was right in the comment section below. Now, let's talk about AI because the 5090 is, I would say, actually an AI GPU. It's the new generation of GPUs where AI is very, very dominant. And as much as this makes us uncomfortable thinking AI is gonna do some things for it, it's basically a very complex algorithm that can just do executions super, super fast. And there are certain ways how you can measure the AI performance. So let's say you're doing some generative AI, whether video or photo. And if you're a creator, you know, this might be very interesting to you. With the 5090, we have now FB4 AI image generation, which is incredible, absolutely ridiculous. 
compared to the 4090 previous gen generation of the 5090, were roughly about three times as fast or can be about three to four times as fast which is ridiculous, largely due to the faster and larger memory capacity and bandwidth. But if we're looking at the tops, trillions of operations per second, then you can see that the M4 Max has a rated AI score of 38 tops. The 5090 here has in FB4 3,352 tops, which is... <sighs> so much faster it's ridiculous it's not even on the same page it's not on the same scale i've got to calculate this it's more than 88 times as fast as the m4 max which is ridiculous now not every single application can utilize it like that and i'm not sure if m4 max supports fp4 image generation and so on but if we're looking at the geekbench 6 AI score, which is very, very basic AI benchmark, but it is a cross platform so we can really compare apples to apples. There is some of the LLM benchmarks, UL ProSign, for example, that we could do, but at the same time, it's not supported on Mac. So if you have any other better benchmark versions, how we can compare Mac versus PC benchmarks, I would love to know from you. In single, we are literally double the performance on the 5090. In half, we're about two and a half times as fast as on the M4 Max. In quantized, we are roughly about 46% faster than the M4 Max. So if you need any AI workflow or AI calculation, it's really no competition. This 5090 is the best GPU for AI you can get. And because of the very slim design, you can have multiple of these in your PC setup. If you'd like to see something like that, subscribe because we've got something crazy coming. Now then you watch the video and you're probably commenting, look, you can compare these two, okay? It's absolutely ridiculous. And I agree with you. It's, it's totally unfair. Let's put it this way. This is Apple's best GPU, the best what Apple can offer. And how does it compare to the best of what NVIDIA can offer. As you can see, NVIDIA with the GPU technology is so far ahead of everybody else. The downside of NVIDIA is, or this GPU is, it actually uses quite a lot of power. It uses over seven times more power than the M4 Max, which makes a lot of these benchmarks really look very good for the M4 because of the efficiency or the performance per watt. But regardless, this shows how good of a beast this 5090 is. If you wanna check out the full review of the 5090 or some more content of the M4 Max and how good this is, go check them out on the channel. And just so you know, I always get back to my minute messages in 24 hours, links in the description below. I'll meet you in the comment section below and see you soon, bye-bye.